What's ripening in you too? So today we're out here putting in a windbreak for a client. And I want to show you the equipment that we use and the methodology that we're using in this case. So the way we lined up this uh, this windbreak, there's an existing fence here. The fence is actually co-owned with the neighbor. And the neighbor is a little bit of a nuisance sometimes. So rather than plant right along the fence line and create a potential you know struggle with them argument with them what we've done is actually spaced the windbreak inward from the fence line so there's still an access lane on the other side there'll be grass that grows in here the grass can be cut and raked over to the uh the bamboo as it establishes and uh, we're not interfering with the fence the fence you know something <laughs> your borders are something you gotta kind of kind of work with who your neighbors are or, or what's next door to you in this case we're going to make this this nice little access track around the back side we're going to get a nice windbreak effect fully inside the property so both sides of the windbreak will be accessible and um, i'll show you how we set that up real quick so what you're looking at is a the tree line bed is right here we're tilling it we already tilled it once and we're coming through with the second pass the tiller and it's six feet wide the tiller that i have and it's going to be plenty wide for the bed what we're going to do is till this up let the grass die and let it start to re-sprout so we'll wait probably two or three weeks or so come back here and till it again and then we're going to determine whether after that second tillage are we ready to bed it up and plant it or do we want to let that happen again and till it a couple times Main thing is we don't want the pasture grass to pop right through in the middle of our bed. So it's an important element. It's important for us at this scale to be able to manage the grass intelligently using equipment rather than trying to, you know, cardboard the whole thing. Because this is, you know, just this is a 10 acre site. The the <laughs> the linear footage of bed for just a windbreak is probably probably uh 1500 1500 Feet or something like that so it's just impractical to do it with like cardboard or you know super mulching so what we're going to do is a little bit different here so you'll see there's a string line right here this string line is not the midline of the bed it's actually the edge of the bed so we can run the tractor next to it so our midline is about 20 feet off the fence so we measured 16 feet off and then i know the width of my machine and we ran our uh, our initial till that way but before I did the till, I actually came through with my box blade. My box blade has these ripper shanks. And so what I was doing basically was a, an initial, I was feeling out to see if there was any big roots that were gonna mess up my tiller. So the tiller is a great tool for, for what it is, but it also is vulnerable to large stones and stumps and roots. And um, so if, if there's anything I can do to avoid hitting those, that helps the longevity of my machine. So here's one that we actually did hit. This was right in the middle of the path. And as you can imagine, it didn't chip well. This is actually my chipper or my, uh, my tiller. This is actually light or not. This is really good firewood right here. This is old pine wood stump. That was in the middle of the bed. And I was trying to feel for those with the, with the ripper shanks, but I didn't get everything. But anyway, that's how we're doing it Josh is coming through with the second pass on the tiller we're gonna let this rest and we'll come back so this is gonna be just part one of this series on the windbreak and I hope you guys stay tuned hope you like the video and we'll see you next time <laughs>